you asked around, you've seen it yourself within one generation, and uh, what is the answer? Why is why are the cru are, why are the teeth crooked? Okay, well uh, let, let's just why to, the teeth just, are crooked. Just put yeah. in your mind this guy that walks off the African Serengeti. You know, beautiful facial architecture, a big broad smile. You know, showing all thirty-two teeth. You know, wisdom teeth in place. One or two centimeters of spare space behind the wisdom teeth. Yeah, not just him, the whole family, the cousins, the uncles, the aunts, the grandchildren, the grandparents, all with this fantastic facial structure. Now, I know, because we've got skull records, that your ancestors, my ancestors, all of our ancestors looked very, very similar. More similar then than they do now. Now, something's changed. And the three factors, there's three main factors, we think. The first factor is we've gone from this incredibly rough, tough, hard diet. That, you know, I've got strong jaw muscles. Right? Yeah. You know, and... You practiced it? I, I chew. <laughs> I love chewing gum. Yeah. So and we've gone from this really tough, rough, hard diet to this really soft diet. You know, I, you know I, I could go down to Starbucks. I could get a white cafe mocha. I could take in several hundred calories with zero masticatory effort. Now, in the past, you couldn't do that. If you wanted to gain calories, you needed to chew. We've often said that we all swallow processed food. Yeah. You either have that processed by machine or you use your inbuilt processing unit. Now, I simply put, I've got a big processing unit. And why have I got a big processing unit? Because I use it. You see these bodybuilders, they've got big bodies because they use them. Yeah. If you use part of your body, it will become well developed. Well, and some of it is growth hormone. <laughs> with well, bodybuilders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, hey, it's not for me to judge or decide. You widen your face and it's strong as it, it makes your job yeah, stronger. Yeah, I mean, stronger. yeah, yeah, I mean, oh, I, using, using steroids yeah. also do well, that. Well, well, yeah, that, that, that's outside. I mean, but th they this do is, eat like six meals a day. Fine, fine, fine. That, that, that's, that, that's not, it's not my, I, I, I would, I'm fascinated with this area. As we go to trying to understand correction, I want to leave no stone unturned in my yeah. quest to help people. And I think those are some interesting avenues you bring up there and how we could help people. But there's a simple thing. You, you can see the wear on ancestral teeth and you see the wear on modern teeth and there's this massive change in the level of wear. And it comes down to a simple use it or lose it. Yeah. And we're not using the system. It's not developing as well. Now, that's one. I think that's possibly the most important factor, the use it or lose it factor. The second most important factor is oral posture. You know, Oral posture. Oral posture. What so is that? We're, we're, you know, you see that guy off the African Serengeti. He's standing up, absolutely. You know, now you're standing up. Aren't yeah. You? yeah, we're sitting up. So not, not, not slouching. Not slouching. Exactly. And yeah. what are we doing in the modern society? We slouch. We're slouching. Yeah. But if you got guy walking off the African Serengeti, standing up, beautiful body posture, absolutely a serene level of body posture. Now, breathing through his nose with his tongue on the roof of the mouth with the lips and teeth contacting, well, the teeth near or actually contacting. Now, that is ideal posture. If you've got that posture, you will grow well. Wait a, sec wait a second, just, you, you, did you just said uh, uh, a, a resting so, tongue on the roof of your mouth? Yeah. So, teeth, lips together, the teeth together, tongue on the roof of the mouth. That was the, um, That's the tropic premise that my father came up with. And that's what I built mewing off. That, well, that's it. Was, mewing was derived from the tropic premise with bits I added on. Teeth, when we say contacting, it should be con in or near contacting with the tongue on the roof of the mouth acting as the antagonist to you chewing and biting together. So you're not going to clench if your teeth are together if the tongue's on the roof of the mouth. That's an important point wow. to the people who criticize me for suggesting you bring your teeth together. Well, just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking of it when I'm resting, when I'm like, uh, when my teeth are together, my lips are together, and when I'm resting, just putting zero effort, yeah, my tongue is touching the upper. Yeah, yeah. The, the really important part, and the really one I introduced, and it's sort of, God, these, a lot of these, I, I say I have a very lucky life. Many ways, things have just happened to me. And I think, you know, there's an old phrase, you, good put, you put good stuff out, good stuff comes back. 
And th- th- what I really identified and one of the core bits of mewing was this identification of the back third of the tongue. And that's the really difficult bit, which I can't get across to people uh, very back easily. Back third of the, the tongue. Back thir- so the, the back third of the top, the dorsal surface, yeah. the back third. We'll come to that because yeah. you. Were, I'm gonna, we need to finish that, the cause. Yeah, yeah, okay. first. Cause is important. If you don't know the cause, you don't understand the problem. And that's my main criticism of modern orthodontics because medicine is supposed to be about treating the cause of the problem, okay? Yeah. And hopefully prevention. Okay, okay. Right, so the other thing is, is block noses. So if you've got your, with the idea, the tropic premise, lips together, teeth together, tongue on the roof of the mouth. Well, if you get a block nose, what you're gonna do? Because you've got two options here. You pack up your bags and die, yeah. Or you're going to lower your tongue, and open let the your air, mouth, and let the air separate in. the teeth, and let the air in. Yeah, exactly. You become a mouth breather. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> That's become a derogatory term now, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting how. And um, it's being very yeah. derogative for, yeah. A, yeah. for many years but, now. Well, I, I hate to say how wound up I am. You know, I see mouth breathing and mewing, these two things uh, um, seem to be very synonymous with each other. Um, now, I think that. You know, for the duration of having a blocked nose, you have got to mouth breathe. Yeah, no question. But <coughs> after your nose clears, you may or may not correct your posture. Okay. So your tongue might your, go your up. Your oral posture. Exactly, yeah. Or you remember we've got a separate, because oral posture and body posture are linked, but in some ways they're also separate. So what happens, though, is I think that, you know, I observe many young children in their first 12 years of development. And that, that famous thousand day period, which is just so vital. And I see them just hanging their mouths open. Yeah, I just, ah. And of course, they've had one, two, three events. Some of those events may be more than a day with block noses. Now, I'm, my, I'm not, um, it's not my air. Allergies isn't really my area. But we know allergies are going up at a crazy level. I mean, just for example, where where were nut allergies? You know, when I was a kid, I had never heard of a nut allergy. And I mean, when I was a kid, I was the asthmatic. I was the child in I think most of the school. There was two asthmatics in the school. How many asthmatics are in most schools now? How many I asthmatics are in no most idea. classes now? In the UK, it seems that, you know, 20 to 30% of the children are asthmatic. Really? That much? So I hear, don't quote me. Okay. But it seems to be if we, we have this tide of pharmacy where every morning these kids wander in, they're carrying a pharmacy with them. And then you go back and they carry a pharmacy home with them. You know, it, it, we, we, there is a lot of change. We've yeah. changed. There's been change. Anyway, if, if you can't breathe out your nose, um, an open mouth posture becomes a habit whether or not you continue to breathe out the nose or the mouth, I think the most where the air goes is less important than where the tongue, lips, and teeth are. But effectively, if you ha- if you're hanging your mouth open and you've got weak muscles from the soft modern food, well, I'm suggesting your face then lengthens. Mm-hmm. You know, if you've seen someone who has a stroke, um, the face one side of the face lengthens. Well, what I'm suggesting is that modern humans have had the equivalent of a bilateral stroke. So more or less evenly, but frequently it's not even, the face has just lengthened. It's dropped down. Mm. Huh? So what's happened is that it's a little bit like my kids. You know, you've know, you got those sort of rubber heads, dolls, and if you stretch the head and it makes the head longer, the head will become narrower and shallower because you know the volume will maintain the same. Yeah, the same yeah. So the cross-sectional <coughs> air reduces. As the cross-sectional area reduces as a face becomes longer, you have less space for the teeth. Yeah. Hence less space for wisdom teeth and then potentially less space for a premolar, four floors, four fours on the floor. Okay. But also you have less space for the tongue, but most importantly, you have less space for the airway. Because at the end of the day, you know, pretty teeth, all fair and well. But it's sleep apnea, there's a big worry. And then to open your airway, you move your head forwards. That's going to throw your body posture off. That's going to give you a forward head posture. That may well give you anterior pelvic tilt. That may well give you some body asymmetry. You know, where is the scoliosis and a downswing in facial form, which is what I'm describing, start and finish? Because when things go wrong, things tend 
to go wrong asymmetrically.